This film does raise a question. Why do critics hate this film so much? Think about it, every press or article you read about this film, they always say it's the worst rated film in the MCU. However, when you look into it, yes it is if you take into the critics, but the audience, they all love it. So, I'll ask again, why do critics hate this film so much? But that, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to just nitpick the film and find out what's wrong. I'm Berry Man, and this is 10 Things Wrong With Films. The Eternals is a 2021 American superhero film based on the Marvel comics of the same name. It tells the story of a group of people known as the Eternals who are sent to Earth to protect it from the Deviants. Now, after 7,000 years on Earth, their mortal enemy, the Deviants, have returned, so the Eternals have to get back together to protect the Earth. When the film was released though, it did receive mixed reviews from critics. They do praise its themes and visuals, but they do criticise its screenplay, its pacing, runtime and also character development. But what have I found wrong with it? Well let's discuss 10 things wrong with Eternals. Number 10. Censorship. So something that's really wrong with this film, and it's not the actual film's fault to a certain extent, is it's banned in so many countries. For example, it's banned in China, and I've got my script here to double check, it's banned in China because the director has previously made comments that China is a place full of lies. Please, I never said that, I'm just repeating what she said. It is also banned in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt. It's all banned in those uh, countries. Now, they did ask for an edited version, but Marvel actually went and said, no, we're not editing this film. Okay, so the film never got released in there. Now in Russia, it did actually have an 18. The reason being is it's illegal to show anything gay to anyone, uh, to a minor. Now that's not my personal opinion, that's fact. That's what happened in Russia. And the funniest one, there was one country that actually did have an edited version because they just wanted the sex scene cut out. Yes, this film actually does have a sex scene in it. It's the first MCU to actually really show a sex scene on a beach. It's quite boring. There's nothing to it, but yeah. So the amount of censorship this film had is a wrong thing. Hell, it's not that bad. Number nine, the Earth's in danger again. So yeah, I'm getting fed up with this in the MCU. Why is the Earth always in trouble? The Deviants are going to take over the Earth. They're going to destroy all life. Hell, there's a Celestial going to be born from the Earth. Seriously, I want an MCU film where we have the joy and excitement of the superheroes, but a little bit more grounded. Is that too much to ask for? Okay, I get like in the Avengers, yes, you need to have this grandiose storyline, but on individual films, tone it down a little bit. It's getting too much now. It's happening too often. And it's getting, quite frankly, boring. Number eight, coloring. Bear with me, because this is a weird one. Because in the comics, like most comics, they're quite bright. They have really bright OTT colors. Now, some comic stories, they do tie, tone it down a little bit to match the mood, but Eternals isn't one of them. In fact, Eternals, it's the complete opposite direction. It's like you've taken tons of acid and you can just see bright colors everywhere. But that did not portray it onto this uh, film. In fact, this film was quite dull. Turn the illumination up a little bit, turn the color saturation up really make the colours pow, but it's, this film does have quite a dull colour palette really, and yeah, no, didn't like it. Really not doing well in this film, am I? Number seven, wrong head. So the Eternals all work for Ashram, the Celestial. Okay, I get that, I'll get on board with that. And it does look impressive and awesome, except it's not Ashram's head. The head they actually use is Essos. That's the Celestial's head. Granted, Ashram is red, but he has lines in some, and it, or some others, it's just a pane of glass, but he doesn't have the six dots. Each Celestial looks different. They have a different style head, and the makers of this film have just used the complete wrong head. 
Which means nitpickers like me will notice facts like this and will call you out on it. Number six, missing burns. Now, granted, this part, it was dark, but still, it was missing. Let me explain. When the Eternals find Ajax's body, she's lying there dead, they're all upset. Granted, it's a bit rubbishy weather, it's about to rain and it's night time. However, the one thing you cannot see is any burn marks anywhere. What burn marks, Berryman? What are you talking about? Well, later on in the film, when they do a flashback, it shows that Icarus killed Ajax, took the body back to where the rest of the Eternals found it, but because of his anguish and grief, even though he killed her, didn't quite get that, his laser beam came out and he torched the place. There was a star in front of him, he torched it. There was flames everywhere. What happened to all those burn marks? What happened to all that damage? That is quite a big flaw in this film, really. Number five, Police Sirem. I am really starting to think that Hollywood hates us British because, once again, we have a film set in London. Most people in the background have a posh English accent, <sighs> but that's only a minor thing. The major thing is the police turn up, sirens blazing, but they're not British sirens. No, they're Europeans. Sorry, Hollywood, there's a chunk of water between us and Europe. Hell, didn't Brexit make the news over there? We're nothing to do with Europe. They have one set of sirens, we have a different set of sirens. Go and watch a TV show called The Bill, which is no longer on anymore, which is a shame. Go and watch that. Learn how the British police siren sounds. <laughs> how did you get that one wrong? Number four, unnecessary flip. Now, I am, a bit of a fan of Gemma Chan. I always have been, ever since she appeared in Doctor Who, The Waters of Mars. I know she's also been in Sherlock as well, but she doesn't really like that role. So, I've always liked seeing Gemma Chan. She's a brilliant actress and a beautiful lady, so you can't really say much. Now, well, the one thing about Gemma Chan is she has a couple of beauty spots, one on her lip, one around about here, where my beard is. So, you can tell when a camera shot is flipped. And that happens in this film, around about the one hour, one minute, 12 second mark. For some reason, while she's being told what's going on by Ashram the Celestial, the camera's flipped. It's a black background, it doesn't need to be. Now I understand in filmmaking, sometimes to get the better shot you flip it, but you didn't need to. And because of Gemma Chan's beauty spots, you notice it straight away. And I'm just sat there thinking, huh, what, 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 what why? Why did you flip the shot? You didn't need to, didn't add anything, and you just give ammos to nitpickers like me, which this film has done a lot. Number three, celestial size. So yes, the size of the celestial, especially Ashram, is impressive. You get to see how big and how awesome he is. But I'm not actually talking about Ashram. I am actually talking about the celestial that is born from the Earth. As he's coming up, you see his hands, these fingers are impressive. Then you see his head, which is smaller than his fingers. Seriously, go and watch this film and you see the fingers are bigger than his head. What, he comes out of the earth and then his head expands? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Why does this creature have bigger fingers than its head? You can imagine how it looks when it's fully grown, but no. Number two, the earth is ruined. Now this section is actually a two for one because even though I've already moaned that the earth's in danger, sorry, no, the earth is completely and utterly twice. Now, let me explain. At the beginning of the film, there's a bit of an earthquake. It, first of all, you think it's just London, then it turns out the entire earth shook. Now, realistically, if that actually did happen, I'm pretty sure that the gravity on the Earth will just ruin us completely. That's it, stopped. But London can't survive an earthquake like that. London doesn't have earthquakes that big, so its infrastructure and its buildings aren't built to withstand earthquakes like that. So it doesn't make any sense why have a massive earthquake in London and the next thing nothing's out of an ordinary. No, sorry, half of London would collapse. 
But the other thing that this film actually does ruin in the Earth, and also potentially the rest of the MCU, is how the size of the Celestial sticking out of the Earth. Because of the size of this thing, and it's come up from the ocean floor, the Earth's now going to be slightly a bit more skew with. It's going to affect the Earth's gravity a little bit. It's going to affect the mass of the Earth. It's not going to spin properly. You can see it from space, and I can guarantee that if they do a space shot in an MCU film later on, you're never going to see that Celestial's head sticking out. And the stupid thing is, if she had turned it to something like sand or salt or something that would have done that and have it dissolve, that would have solved this problem and also future MCU films. But yeah, this film, trying to save the Earth, in one hand, ruined the Earth. Number one, post credit scene. Apart from the fact I really, really want to moan the fact that Harry Styles turned up in a post credit scene. However, that's just me. I know lots of people like that bit. But that's not what I'm moaning about the post credit scenes. And this is about the MCU in whole for the past few films is they're not setting up the next film in the MCU. Granted, this did set up the next Eternals film. Great. But what about the next film in the MCU, which was Spider-Man No Way Home? Great film if you haven't seen it, go and see it. There was nothing to actually like really push that home. Why not? This is what people loved about the MCU to start with. It's sort of, right, the next film is gonna be this. The next film's gonna be this. Why can't we go back to something like that? Because I miss that in the MCU. Final thoughts. So as I said in the intro, this is, from the critics' point of view, the worst MCU film ever. Now, as I said, I've defended it, saying the audience don't agree. But so what is the issue with this film? Is it a good MCU film? Compared to the rest of the MCU? No, it's not. It's not the worst. There are, is one other film that's not as good, but it's not a good MCU film. However, it isn't actually that bad of a film. So if you took it out of the MCU, it probably would actually fare that little bit better. But because you watch it and compare it to this behemoth called the MCU, that's what actually lets this film down. It's not a bad story, it is okay. The way the story's told is actually very off-putting. It's very to and from, to and from. I didn't put it in there, even though I wanted to, about the flashbacks, because it starts the film, flashback. Carries the film on, flashback. Why? Why couldn't you do all the flashback bits at the very beginning and then continue the story on? That would have made this film a so much more better and a lot more easier to watch and understood and follow. Now, later on, they did do a flashback about what really happened with Icarus. That was perfect. Perfect timing, perfect storytelling, brilliant. And it had that twist in it as well, which I love those sorts of twist things. That part's doing brilliantly. But the beginning of this film, it's just so all over the place, so disjointed, makes it hard to follow. And I think that's one of the reasons why critics didn't like this film. Another big flaw this film had was referencing. Now, granted that it did reference the Thanos and the rest of the MCU. Fine, I've got no issue with that. But referencing Batman, Superman and Alfred the Butler? No, you don't need to do that. It didn't quite, well, it did work, but it was unnecessary. And now the other thing that this film was praised for is the visuals and the special effects are good, but as I said, the coloring, I found this visually very dull and flat. So visually it's not that good. The soundtrack's okay, nothing to shout about. The directing, same again, it's okay, but nothing to shout about. There's nothing special or new or unique with this film. But as I said, it does have an okay story, just told wrong. So what am I going to rank this film? Well, there's a lot of issues with it, but I'm not gonna be overly that harsh to it. So I'm actually gonna give it a six out of 10 berries. Maybe I'm being a little bit too nice this. Hell, I'm being better than some of the critics. I sort of get where the critics come from, but I also get where the audience comes from as well. So I'm trying to like be a middle ground, which is not like me. 
Anyway, that's what I think of this film. What do you think of this film? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll reply back to you as soon as I can. On to next week. Well, I'm actually going to do a film that was requested when this film came out. It is another Ryan Reynolds film. Let's face it, last time I did a Ryan Reynolds film, I did sort of slate that one. So hopefully that's going to uh, improve this. But want to know what I really think about that film? Or what that film is? Well, come back next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.